Hi, I'm Doug Garrett here for Board Game Geek from Essen 2012. I have with me Richard Breeze, as well as Sebastian Bleasdale, who have designed together Key Flower. Now, we've had other key uh, games from you, Richard, and Sebastian, you uh, came to with On the Underground and have you've been on camera already earlier uh, in the thing, so now you guys have come together to do a new key game, so we're very excited about this. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, <coughs> Key Flower is the, the seventh game in the Key series. Um, it's a game I've designed with Sebastian using a, a mechanic that uh, Sebastian conceived and uh, showed me in a, a playtest game um, a couple of years ago. And uh, I wrote to Sebastian to say there is a, a bigger game here and the ideas. And Sebastian was uh, happy to work with me and, and develop that. And we spent uh, many a long afternoon um, on a regular basis exploring the mechanics. Uh, Sebastian, I'll do it with you on to... Okay, um, well the aim of the game, as is always with these things, is to get points of one form or another. So you get points by collecting gold, gold's worth of um, one victory points, hurts. You get points by building these buildings and upgrading them. You can see on the other side there's a particular point score there. Okay. And finally, and most importantly, you get points through the winter tiles, which give you stuff for the resources you've collected throughout the game. Okay. These are the obvious sorts of things. So, for example, Mercer's Guild have three sort of different resources, it scores five points. That's any number of the same resources, scores three points each. Five separate men scores three points, so ten would score six, and so on. Okay. So those are, those are all at the end of the game, right? These, right. These, end these game come, up, come into play at the end of the game. However, at the beginning of the game, each person's given three of them at random. Oh, They're okay. hidden behind the screen, so got specific control. You know what's going to be coming up later. All right, so you have a goal for what's to come. Exactly. Nice. But the, the trick is you still actually have to win these tiles at the end. They're not yours necessarily. Okay, so the, I see. the game is played over four seasons. These are the mm -hmm. tiles for the winter. With two players, the game scales very well from two to six, although you get a different experience, obviously, with two players than you do with six. And what are we talking about in terms of a time frame for two versus six players um, for the game plan? Uh, it always depends on the speed of the players. Yes, but of I, comfortably, I think you could expect a two-player game to take around about an hour. And uh, building up, it, it's one that scales, so there's not a huge number of differences between two and six. And okay. the rules, apart from the number of tiles, is exactly the, is exactly the same, okay. however number of players you've got. Nice. So with two players, you have six tiles that you're bidding for. Mm -hmm. um, to discuss the bidding mechanism, okay. which is the key key to the game. On your turn, one thing you can do with your meeples is you can stick a meeple down and just bid for the alehouse. Okay. That gives you some, um, some ownership towards it. Then some, um, your opponents can, for example, decide, actually, I want the alehouse. I'm going to stick two people down. They stick them on their side of the board so they know who is trying to, who's trying to do that. On my side, if I've got enough people, I could add to them two more meeples. In this case, I decided the only of one, so in this case, maybe I'll decide Alehouse, no good to me. I'll move to the gold mine instead. Okay. Uh, so that's it. I need to add there, that's a bit, if you've got to burn two people together at the same time, then both people move. You don't just have to burn the one person moving. Uh, they can't be split up again. Got it. So, yeah, so if you had to, you have to move both of those to the new spot. Exactly. Okay. Now, the thing which makes the game interesting is, is that, of, um, well, there are two things. I'm That's sure that there are many things that make things. the game interesting. But the thing which was added in development, which, which Richard came up with, was the u using the tile abilities. Because in addition to that, you can basically sort of, um, place meeples on the tiles, even when they're being bid for, okay. and get the ability for the tile. <coughs> so in this case, we have the Ale House. Sticking a man on here allows you to take an extra man from behind the screen. And so then, now you've got some new extra resources there. Okay. Each of the tiles is unique um, in each season. Mm -hmm. um, and once we've finished the bidding, uh, you, you start off, if I didn't mention, with eight workers in different colours. Your opponents don't know which workers, what combination right. you've so got. The, so the key here is, as Richard is showing, that you aren't a particular colour meeple. Instead, no. you're drawing these and then bidding with that particular colour yeah. on a thing. So, as you said, I couldn't add, if this were yours, Richard, we, you could not add a blue to this, right? That's it has correct. to be another yellow. That's okay, right, yeah. good. And later on in the game, there are tiles which allow you to create green workers. So this ah. one would be a little bit of a tricky tile, but you put a blue worker on there, or any red or yellow, mm -hmm. and then you put a yellow worker in the bag, and then Sebastian will find some green workers off camera somewhere, 
and that immediately goes behind your screen. The advantage of that is that there are no other green workers at the moment. So if ah. you play that green worker, no one can bid against you. Because right. once you've started a color on a particular tile, right. that's the type that you're going to do. So if I play that on there, I'm very likely to get that tile. Yeah, I see. So at the end of spring, we look to see which tiles, we, any, losing, any losing bids go back behind your screen. And then you, the winning bids go into the bag. Uh -huh. However, the person who wins the tile takes both the tile and the worker. Okay. That worker goes behind the screen, so it's... Oh, yeah, so they get the that. Screen. Okay, that's interesting. So you then attach the, the tiles to your, um, your home tile. Each person starts off with one of these home tiles, which are uh -huh. identical. So and these home tiles, they look like the... Oh, no, that's a stable. Here's a home tile. So yeah, this is a home one. tile. Um, that gives you a basic ability of transport so you can move one of the resources that you've earned from one tile to another along a road, um, and you're allowed to upgrade the tile. So by placing a worker on here, if I had the correct, um, so for example, if I had a gold there, and this tile was here, I could put a worker on here, which allows me to move one resource along one road to the next tile, ah. and it allows me one upgrade. I've got that resource on this tile, mm -hmm. Uh, which is that's the requirement for the upgrade in the arrow box in between the two. So that tells you what's on this side of the tile, that shows you what happens. When I pay the upgrade, I can flick the tile on the same orientation, ah, and that's what it shows go. you on the back. Nice. So, so very straightforward. What you're then, sorry. I know where well, you get a better version than possibly victory points. This one's obviously a fairly strong one, so you don't get any victory points for that. Yeah. So you build up your own village. Um, and there are separate tiles that are going to come in in the summer season, the autumn season and winter season. So for example, some of the summer tiles, um, some of them are a little bit different because they give you some special abilities as well if you win these particular tiles. Um, Resources and such. So this one gives you a green man at the end of each round. This one okay. gives you, allows you to upgrade anything using any resources rather than having to use specific resources. Okay. Now the other, it gets more interesting and a lot more decisions and combinations as the game grows. Of course. Um, so what happens here is that you, you start to build your own villages. Uh, you can use the work, you can use your own uh, village tiles, and in which case the, the resources that you, you decide to, to create um, arrive on that particular tile. Okay. However, the, one of the key aspects of the game is you can also use your opponent's villages. So I can oh. use this one here. I might get to them coming things back here. Okay. So what Sebastian did then, he used the tile for a second time. First time he used it as one worker, second time is two workers, third time is three workers. So this has potentially three uses. But as you know, the, the the benefit to me of Sebastian using the tile, although there may be a frustration because I actually wanted to use it, at the end of the season, workers in my village will come back. back. Okay, all and right. They will be supplemented by some tiles which are off camera at the moment. There are, in addition to the tiles here that we're bidding for, there is a, uh, a tile or tiles, depending on the number of players, which we additionally bid for, and this gives us the um, the start player position for the next round. Okay. And the first choice of the contents of one of these boats. Ah. Uh, these are seeded at the beginning of each round. So, for example, here um, there will be six workers, which are probably not there. Yeah. Okay. So this one. Would... I, I think people can imagine the six workers. Right. Yeah. 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 So the workers would be on here as well. And the person that wins this time will get first choice. Uh, the, the next person will get the, the remaining, so everyone will get more workers. So uh, it's not a game that you can go horribly wrong with. Uh, you will always get, you will always be able to progress. Um, it's not that death spiral that can happen in some games. Right. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear um, that. The, the key aspects of most of the designs, the key series designs, is there's no direct player interaction. Uh, mm -hmm. It's through the game mechanics. Uh, everything is positive. You're creating things rather than destroying things and there's a reasonable amount of player interaction because of the use of other players' tiles. Yeah, um, so you really have to be attentive to what other people have gotten so that you can yeah. possibly use their actions. Yeah. It's I mean, interesting. I mean, you can submit less about with other people in some ways. Like, for example, so then if I know that Richard hasn't got very many green, many reds, I can stick a red one on there and thereby so then stop him from so then using his right. specs so, goods. Or 
or if I know that he's um, desperately wants at this tile which he's bidding with red on, I can start another price over here to make sure that I'm more likely to see it. That's good. And things yeah. like that. But I see. It's kind of um, not very So good. now, so because the worker here is red, all other workers during that round are going to have to be red. Exactly. All right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's. All right, so you fly, and then why don't you, how, how do the winter tiles that you have co uh, eventually come into play? The, the tiles that you have, you, you, you sometimes, not always, but you will try and play or you have the advantage of knowing that these tiles are potentially in the game. Right. With two, three or four players, you have three of these tiles each at the beginning yeah. of the game. You have to introduce uh, at least one of them into the game uh, in the winter. So in the winter, there could be between four and twelve tiles available to bid for. Okay. Um, and so you, are, you get to choose whether they're going to be available yeah, for bidding or not? However, you're not, you have to win them in the same way. Right, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you may play towards something, but you're not guaranteed to. I got, okay, I, that makes sense. Yeah. And you could be like, oh, I know Sebastian has done, gotten a lot of this. Exactly. So you definitely Spot don't on. want to put this yeah. one out. Okay, all right. Well, we could, well, you may think Sebastian um, Sebastian's not too much of a threat. I'll put it in here, the effort stop him to um, bidding on the one which I really want to get. Great. Right. needs to beat somebody else with in a more right. game. Well, fantastic. So again, Key Flower, can you hand me the uh, lid there, Sebastian, so we can oh, get okay. it on screen there? There we go. Key Flower from Richard Breeze and Sebastian Bleasdale. Definitely going to be, we're going to have six copies at VGGCon, so ready to go. And Richard Breeze himself will be there. So come listen to Richard, teach you the game, and have some fun. Thanks a lot for coming. Um, if, yes. if you see me there and you'd like a demonstration, um, just tap me on the shoulder and I'll be delighted. He will be your slave demoer at <laughs> PGGCon. <laughs> well, we've been doing it for four days here and the, the, the feedback has been very positive. There's a German games magazine called Fair Play and we were the top ranked game at the show yesterday. So Congratulations I think you won't be wasting your time. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you very much. Good to see you.